Hello and welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Andy. We're on location at the United States Military Academy, the West Point Museum at West Point, New York. We're here doing an Unseen History episode where we go to a museum and we give them the opportunity to take some of their stuff out of the vault. You know, most museums only get to put a little bit of their collection on display. And this gives them a chance to show unique items, items that don't always get displayed, whether there's not a good location or they're too fragile or too rare, and get them to show them to you and get a little bit more context about their story. I'm here today with Michael Diaz, who is the Curator of History and Uniforms at the museum. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, welcome back. Well, thank you for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, I, I'm still so blown away by the collection you guys have here. Um, what do we have in front of us today? Uh, so our collection is particularly great on the Civil War. It's one of the times, one of the spaces that we go really deep. And so here we have some uh, materials from uh, General Alexander S. Webb, not on display. We rotate through through our, our long list of civil civil war characters. Well, before we jump into the items, let's make Alexander Webb's connection to West Point. Sure. You know what, what's his connection to this place? Why is he, are his things here at the museum? So he's a uh, class of eighteen fifty five graduate. Uh, goes on to command the Philadelphia Brigade at the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, ends up as the president of the City College of New York later on in life, and then uh, his materials come through us uh, through his daughters. Okay. You know, and it's, you know, it's interesting, we've talked in the, you know, talking in the Rev Gazette space, Revolutionary War Gazette, you know, we talked about things that come here to Fortress West Point, to, you know, the, the fortress complex that's here, or their connection to how they touch on it. Now we're talking, talking about university, you know, and right. the academy and how it's training the officers, the changing function of this location. Absolutely. And something that they harp on pretty early, I mean, we have documents describing, you know, uh, collecting at, uh, for the museum at West Point going back to the 1820s. So building a collection here, uh, preserving stories, preserving legacy was something that they were consciously doing at the Academy. Well, and you talk about stories. The stories for these two items, or these items that we're gonna talk about here, are a pretty gripping story, right? Absolutely. So what are, where do these items come from? What are these items and what's their connection sure. here? So as, as I mentioned, Webb was the, as a newly minted Brigadier General, was the commander of the Philadelphia Brigade at the Battle of Gettysburg. They're the guys that are on the receiving end of Pickett's Charge. Uh, so they're up, you know, up there at the uh, top of uh, Cemetery Ridge, uh, right by the Copse of Trees, and the Virginians are, are coming up the hill at them. And so we have uh, this cane here. Uh, if you're able to read the inscription on it, uh, but basically says, uh, gives his name, General Alex S. Webb, uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, uh, and then mentions that this is the from the flagstaff of the most advanced of Pickett's uh, regiments. So presumably then this uh, was made from the flagstaff of one of either Garnet's or Armistead's regiments that actually get over to the wall with Armistead in that last charge. You know, you and think about that high water mark of the Confederacy. Right. Doesn't doesn't specify which you know which which regiment. I know that there's been a lot of oh, sure know, arguing about that. <laughs> uh, Especially the 26th North Carolina crowd that was you know yes. on the other part of the angle. You know. <laughs> right. But yeah, we can we can narrow this down to a pretty small list, list of candidates. Uh, Webb is wounded in the leg. Uh, during uh, dr during the fighting there, you know he's in the, he's in the thick of it during the uh, the bombardment as the Confederates are coming up the hill. He's, you know, he's kind of puffing on a cigar, kind of on top of the uh, the, the stone wall, uh, trying to you know, inspire the men with his, his his coolness and bravery. As the fighting goes on, there's one point where he, he's trying to grab the colors and lead uh, lead his brigade forward to hold the line. Well, he's uh, unknown to the brigade too, so he has to do this personal leadership, right. really, right? Absolutely. He's only in command for a couple of days, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, that he right he gets promoted right right before the battle, so he needs to make an impression. He needs to show the guys that uh, that he's that you know, that he he's worthy of the command. Sure. And the fact that that they make this cane for him, that they recover this flagstaff from the battlefield, supposedly the uh, the metal part is made from melted down musket fixtures from the uh, from the Confederate muskets. Uh, shows that I think he he did a good job impressing his men. So we think this was presented probably very close to after the Battle of Gettysburg. Then. I believe so. If you look at the inscription, it's pretty roughly done. It's not kind of well engraved. It's almost you know, it looks almost handwritten. Maybe even something like they went to a battery forge and artillery to melt the metal or something right. like that. Right. Previously on the show, we've seen Rutherford B. Hayes's cane that was presented to him after the Battle of Winchester in 1864. And it's interesting you seeing this theme of canes being presented to senior officers by their men. Yeah, that is right. It's part of the kind of military culture of the time and continues uh, to be for the, uh, for the rest of the 19th century. Well, shifting over here, you know, we leave something that 
has a very unique story coming over to one of the most iconic things, you know, a Medal of Honor. So Alexander Webb presumably is a Medal of Honor recipient, correct? Uh, yes, uh, eventually. So officers would not have been eligible for the Medal of Honor during the war. That's something that comes in after, uh, uh, in 1891 is when Webb gets his. And that would have been a chest hanger at the time. You know, we're so much, uh, we're so f used to seeing that as a neck hanger, mm -hmm. uh, the, the modern iteration of the medal. So the one that's on the table is just a, just a copy, just, a, just an example, but that shows what a type one Medal of Honor would, uh, would look like. So he has the he has the first version one. Why do we see the blue, why do we see the second version here? So uh, with the the first uh, version of, of the Medal of Honor, the Grand Army of the Republic, the Veterans mm -hmm. Organization, uh, has their membership badge. It looks an awful lot like that. Uh, like like Seen the in Medal many of Honor. photos, yeah. Uh, so there's a move to first make the uh, to change the design of the Medal of Honor first as a blue uh, chest hanger, and then eventually as a uh, as a neck hanger. And so pretty late uh, in his life, uh, Webb dies in 1911. Uh, he requests the updated version of the Medal of Honor uh, to wear. And so uh, receives, receives this one. So, you know, this is slightly different than when I've seen Medals of Honor today. You know, I, the, the design is slightly different, correct? Yes. Uh, the big change is that the modern Medal of Honor, there's a panel that has the 13 stars on it uh, that then the metal hangs kind of from, the ribbon goes into that and then the metal hangs behind. Here, they printed the 13 stars directly onto the ribbon, but the, the clasp that, that keeps the metal on kind of crushes that. So, yeah, it's a little less photogenic than the modern right, version. Doesn't look quite as good as, as, as the modern version. So Webb was awarded the medal for his actions at Gettysburg, correct? Yes, and specifically for his bravery in, in the midst of the battle, trying to lead his men forward to, to hold the line, is what the inscription reads. How does the medal itself end up here? Uh, so, and he... Uh, though he's from Philadelphia, he ends up moving to uh, New York, and that's, that's where he dies. His family stays in, in uh, New York City, and his daughters donate the, uh, his, his, his effects to the museum. It's interesting to see we have this token of appreciation from the men under him for his actions. It's interesting to see this token appreciation from the country being passed down to him, kind of getting both from above and below the symbols of what he did there was so important. Right, both something very immediate and then something very considered you know, from the, from the top down. Well, Mike, thank you so much for getting to bring these out. You know, I, Alexander Webb is just, you know, I think about him, he's just one of those tough, hard-hitting generals in the war, one of those young guys who come up quickly, makes his mark, and you know, I think as a young kid growing up and seeing like the movie Gettysburg where he's portrayed by Brian Pohanka, who's a historian and reenactor. And, you know, you think about he's featured prominently in those parts of the movie and seeing these things that are, you know, directly attributed to Webb is just really interesting to me. Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's a great character and uh, we're, we're happy to help tell the story. Well, outstanding. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Alexander Webb, seeing these artifacts from him. And I hope you've made some connection to his story. You know, it's just a small part of the overall story here at West Point. And coming to the museum, the collection here is tremendous. It's outstanding. And whether you're into the Civil War, American Revolution, World Wars, there is something here for you. They have artifacts going back hundreds of years. And I can't think of a better place to come make a good connection to history. For Civil War Digital Digest, I'm Andy. We'll catch you next time.